Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about contributions of Robert Goose, Alexander Fleming and Edward Jenner. Myself, I am Jehran J, MSc Biology, Life Science, St. Mary's College, Trishu. Let's discuss each one in detail. First, let's discuss about Robert Koch. The full name of Robert Koch is Heinrich Hermann Robert Koch. He was a German country doctor who later became the professor of hygiene and the director of Institute of Infective Diseases at Berlin. He perfected many bacteriological techniques and he was known as father of practical bacteriology. The field of microbiology developed further and gained its importance after the fascinating discoveries later than 1600s by the discovery of microscope by a pioneer scientist. The important discoveries that contributed much to the discipline of microbiology is the conflict over the theory of spontaneous generation followed by the Koch postulates that completely changed the view of microorganisms. Koch also discovered specific causative agents of deadly infectious diseases include tuberculosis, cholera and anthrax. Let's discuss each discoveries of Koch in detail. First one is Anthrax bacillus. He discovered drought shaped organisms in the blood of animals that died of anthrax. He experimentally obtained the anthrax organism in pure culture on a depression slide by the inoculation of infected blood into the aqueous humor of a bullock's eye. He observed the multiplication of bacteria and the spore formation. He infected these spores into the mice and reproduced the disease. He found that in certain conditions, the anthrax bacillus forms spores, which can survive on earth for years. Then he passed anthrax bacilli from the blood of an infected animal from one mouse to the another through 20 generations, and he found that the condition is bare true. By through, he worked out the life history of anthrax bacillus. The next discovery of Koch is a staining technique. He introduced a staining technique. He prepared dried bacterial film that is smear on a glass light and stained them with aniline dyes for producing a better contrast under microscope. He discovered tuberculae bacillus which is popularly known as Koch bacillus. He injected tuberculae bacilli into laboratory animals and reproduced the disease which satisfy all Koch's postulates. Koch's another breakthrough discovery was Vibro cholerae, which is a causative organism of cholera disease. He discovered Vibro cholerae, the causative agent of cholera disease. He developed pure culture technique by introducing solid media. The use of agar obtained from dried seaweeds in the preparation of solid bacteriological media was first suggested by Fro Hisse, the wife of Koch student. This agar agar is totally inert with no nutritive value and solidifies at 45 degrees Celsius and melts at 90 degrees Celsius and was found to be the most suitable solidifying agent in the preparation of culture media. Coach isolated bacteria in pure culture on these solid media. It was a revolutionized in bacteriology. Tuberculin test. He discovered old tuberculin. Coach noted that when tuberculin bacilli or its protein extracted was injected into a guinea pig already infected with bacillus, an exaggerated reaction took place and the reaction remains localized. This is popularly called Koch phenomenon and it is demonstration of cell mediated immunity. The tuberculin test is based on Koch's phenomenon. He er erroneously found that protein extracted from tuberculin bacilli called is old tuberculin could be used in the treatment of tuberculosis. Koch did a series of experiments to fulfill the criteria laid by his teacher, Henley, to establish the causative role between the particular organism and particular disease. They are popularly known as Koch postlays 
that is Henley Coates postulates. As we said, Coates led by his teacher Henley to establish the causative role between a particular organism and a particular disease. They are known as Coates postulates, a series of experiments to fulfill the criteria of Coach Postlis, Henley's Coast Postlis. Now let's discuss Coach Postlis. There are total five points are there in Coach Postlis. First one, a specific organism should be found constantly in association with the disease. The organism should be isolated and grown in a pure culture in the laboratory. The pure culture when inoculated into a healthy susceptible animal should produce symptoms or lesions of the same disease. From the inoculated animal the microorganism should be isolated in pure culture. In addition, criterion introduced in the specific antibodies to the causative organism should be demonstrable in patient serum. That is microorganism here we are taken mice. The microorganisms are isolated from the dead animal. Then the microorganisms are grown in a pure culture. It forms colonies in culture media. The microorganisms are identified under microscope. The microorganisms are then injected in laboratory condition into a healthy animal. The disease is again reproduced in the second animal. The microorganisms are isolated from the infected animal. Then the pathogenic microorganisms are grown in pure culture. They again form colonies and they are isolated and identify the microorganisms under the microscope. Next, let's discuss about the contributions of Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming was an English scientist who worked at St. Mary's Hospital in London. Fleming was associated with two major discoveries which is a breakthrough that is lysozyme and penicillin. In 1922, he discovered lysozyme by demonstrating the nasal secretion has the power of dissolving or lysing certain kinds of bacteria. Subsequently, he showed that lysozyme was present in many tissues of the body. One of the major breakthrough discovery of Alexander Fleming was penicillin notatum. In 1929, Fleming made an accidental discovery that the fungus penicillin notatum produces an antibacterial substance which he called penicillin. Fleming was culturing staphylococci in petri dishes and some of his culture were contaminated with a mold. Subsequently, identified as penicillium notatum. Around the mold colony there was a clear zone where streptococci disappearing. Fleming attributed this to the production of an antibacterial substance by the mold. Fleming cultured the fungus penicillium notatum in broth cultures. Filter the fungal mat and obtain the penicillin in the soluble form in culture filtrate. In 1940, Howard Florey and Ernest demonstrated its antibacterial action in vivo. While working in USA, they were able to produce large quantities of penicillin in pure form. In 1945, Fleming, Florey, chain share the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for the discovery of penicillin. The discovery of penicillin were as a serendipity but it was a breakthrough discovery in the field of microbiology. Lastly, let's discuss about Edward Jenner. The contributions of Edward Jenner is much not least in the field of microbiology. It was not only an advantage in the field of microbiology but also a breakthrough in the field of medicine. 
Jenner was an English country physician who discovered a safe and efficient vaccination against smallpox which ultimately led to the eradication of smallpox. Jenner observed that dairy workers exposed to occupational cowpox infection were immune to smallpox. He proved experimentally that resistant to smallpox can be induced by injecting cowpox material vaccinia from disease pustules into man. In 1796, he tested his vaccine with a small boy named James Philip. Pasteur gave the general term vaccine in honor of Jenner's cowpox vaccine to various materials used to induce active immunity. Jenner published his findings in 1798 in pamphlet An Inquiry into the Cause and the Effect of Virole Vaccine. Today we discuss about the contribution of three famous scientists Robert Koch, Alexander Fleming and Edward Jenner. The contributions of these three scientists was a milestone in the field of microbiology. Thank you all. Let's see with another topic in another session. Thank you.